for vets in VA nursing homes in 52 out of 99 facilities. It is, quote, causing actual harm. The VA released its health care inspection report for more than 100 community living centers across the country earlier this month. Three of the centers are in Ohio, Dayton, Cincinnati, Chillicothe. At the Dayton facility, inspectors who visited between April and December of last year found veterans moaning in pain without adequate medication. Only on News 5, some are calling it a senior care crisis. The population of senior citizens in Northeast Ohio, it is about to explode over the next decade. Seniors continue to live longer, and our issue is how do we keep them healthy for a longer period of time. The major shift is expected to seriously tax the systems we have in place for senior care. And tonight, experts are warning families be ready to start making critical care decisions for your aging parents. Find your side investigator Joe Paganakis has been digging into the senior care crisis for us. So Joe, we know there's some concern about funding, but this is also a very personal situation for a lot of families. And Danita, experts say families will have to take more time to communicate with their aging parents so they can be better prepared to give them the help that they need. They're lonely. They want to see you. They need help. They need someone to go to the grocery store. I'm sorry. Paula Mitten gets emotional when she thinks about how much time, care, and love she's given in taking care of her 94-year-old mother, Doris Dewey, at her Cleveland Heights home over the past 13 years. So when you decide to be a caretaker, you don't realize everything that's involved. Experts say there are a growing number of seniors in Northeast Ohio and a care system that's struggling to keep pace. It's going to be a big issue um, because we're running into you know, the baby boomers are coming into that age group where they're going to need more assistance. The Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging pointing to this Miami University gerontology study that indicates the senior population in need could double in Northeast Ohio over the next 20 years, further fueling a senior care crisis. Seniors continue to live longer. And our issue is how do we keep them healthy for a longer period of time? Agency CEO Douglas Beach says early intervention and prevention is critical in monitoring the well-being of elderly parents, safeguarding your home or your parents' home a good first step. Like a throw rug, for example. Um, trip over at fall. Lighting is very important. How much light do you have? Do you have burnt out bulbs and is anybody checking those and testing those? Do you have grab bars in your bathroom? Meanwhile, for Paula Mitten and her mother, Doris, a bad, bad. Paula asks everyone watching this story, when was the last time you called your mother or father? Touch base. If you're out of state, have someone you know, a friend, go over and make sure they're okay. And the Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging currently has more than 9,000 seniors in its care management system through its Aging and Disability Resource Center. That number continues to grow every day. And by the way, Doris turns 95 years young on Saturday. Live in the Tech Center, I'm Five on Your Side investigator Joe Paganakis. Happy early birthday, Doris. Well, tomorrow, Cuyahoga County will unveil a new program designed to help connect seniors with county services. Navigators from the Cleveland Clergy Alliance will be working to help them learn about their options and what resources are available. We will bring you all the details starting on News 5 at 4 and also on the News 5 app. Tonight at 11, the governor's office says there's a deal with the state house to raise the state's gas tax by 11 cents. It also calls for a 20 cents per gallon increase on diesel fuel. The governor has said an 18 cent tax hike would be the bare minimum needed to keep up with necessary road and bridge repairs. Only on News 5 tonight, he spent 15 years in prison for a crime he did not commit until News 5's reporting helped get him exonerated. Today, Ruel Saylor marked one year as a free man. He celebrated the first anniversary of his freedom by exchanging vows with his longtime girlfriend, Amy Spence, right there on the steps of the Cuyahoga County Justice Center. It was Spence who contacted News 5 and fought for Sailor's release for years. News 5 helped move the process along. We were there last March when Sailor walked out of the Justice Center a free man. Today, he told us he wants to see changes in how police take statements from witnesses to assure accuracy in criminal cases. Anytime they interview witnesses, it should be like they got body cams. It should be video documented right then and there on the spot. That way, anything outside of what's on that tape is in, inadmissible. Sailors hosted dozens of events since his release, demanding changes in state law that would help make it easier for wrongful conviction cases to move through the system. 
Still ahead on News 5 at 11, an old neighborhood struggling to make way for the new. The fight between history and growth. It's unfolding in the generations old streets of Little Italy. Plus, he's the longest serving employee in the history of his town. Tonight, his Northeast Ohio community made sure this retiring firefighter got the send off he deserves. And weather-wise, it's almost time to play ball. Anybody going to pitch one to me? No, 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 no. No, no, no. 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 Tribe opening day, plus look at all that rain headed your way. No. Uh, uh. <laughs> I kind of hate to say it this way, but I don't think Little Italy is going to be able to survive what's going on with the construction. Oh, there's a whole lot of new in one of Cleveland's oldest neighborhoods. New landlords, new construction, moving into Cleveland's Little Italy. And not everyone thinks it's for the better. Only News 5's Kevin Barry explains why all this change is happening and what kind of future people see for the neighborhood. Not much has changed in the century that the Holy Rosary Church chimes have washed over Little Italy. I absolutely love this neighborhood. It's been my whole life. Matteo Silvaggio owns Little Italy Juan. We're an old time neighborhood family. We've been here uh, since the 1890s. But now that University Circle has been built up nearby, Matteo says he fears that development is creeping into Little Italy too. Developers feel that we just need a lot more people around. The market's kind of shifted towards density. Ray Christosik works to grow and protect the neighborhood. And I think that the city has taken a position they want density as part of their development in the areas. <laughs> Right across the street from murals that show the little Italy of the past, 40 new apartments will shape the community into the future. Just down the block from Matteo's wine shop, another 30 new units. While around the corner, another new project looks to create 66 new apartments. Michael Panzica's company is behind those last two, and he says you have to build bigger to make the projects worth it. The cost of the overall development uh, necessitates that sort of density. Matteo doesn't mind the new people, but more tenants means more cars and parking is already tight. I just kind of wish that they would have taken into consideration a little bit how congested this neighborhood is going to get. And Ray says history will show how much development is too much. But, you know, by that time the buildings are up, it might be too late. You know, we, we, don't, we don't know what that is. Even where new buildings aren't rising up, new landlords are moving in. Probably the, the biggest challenge is putting all the tenants at ease. David Orloff and a few other local businessmen started Preservation Partners of Little Italy with a focus on the preservation. They're buying Mateo's building and the one across the street where Pinello Gallery's sign shows they'll be leaving soon. David says a long-term lease at a rent adjusted for what that space in Little Italy is worth today just wouldn't work. Things are happening. They understand it's going to enhance the value not only of properties that people own, but also it's going to command a, a different uh, a rent factor. New buildings are not part of David's vision, but he says residents are projecting their fears about the big projects onto his. I think some of that overlap is why people are worried about what we're looking to do. A new gelato store is coming into the space where the gallery is, but David says the point isn't to drive out the storefronts or the restaurants that make Little Italy so special, especially because it's what the new residents will want. They want to be part of the, the, the shops, the, the, the restaurants, the, the, the bakeries, sure. you know. So if you, if you take all that away and you make it all that, I, I don't know what you've become. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you've changed the whole dynamic. Ray says he's still trying to find the line between preserving Little Italy and ruining it with too much development. Matteo says they're already dangerously close to crossing that line. I kind of hate to say it this way, but I don't think Little Italy is going to be able to survive what's going on with the construction. Because on a street that still closely matches what it looked like in the 1940s, it's never going to be the Little Italy that I knew when I was growing up. It doesn't take many additions. It's going to change, and you're going to get that sense that, yeah, you're losing it. Before the chimes fall on different scenery. But you still have a very vibrant neighborhood. In Cleveland, I'm Kevin Barry, News 5.
at 11 tonight. Talk about a spectacular send off. This is something an Olmstead Township firefighter retiring from the job and he was really sent off in style. Lieutenant Joe Fidali offered a salute tonight as a procession of police and fire vehicles drove by his home to celebrate his last day on the job. Joe was a firefighter for 35 years. That makes him the longest serving employee of Olmstead Township in the town's history. And tonight he told us what he will miss the most. The people that we work with, we work a 24 hour shift. So I've spent a third of my life with the guys that I work with. The only people I'm with more is my family here at home. So we have a lot of time spent together. I'm gonna miss being with the guys and I'm gonna miss doing the, the job. Joe was also bid farewell with a performance from the Bagpipe and Drum Corps, and then a flyover by Metro Life Flight as well. As for what's next, you know what he told us? Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> well it. deserved, he right? He deserves it. Nice yes, job. yes. Congratulations. Very nice. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And everyone puts their life on the line. Yes.